Lord God, may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord our God, our rock and redeemer. Amen. So Jesus has called his first disciples out of the dirt and grime of their fishing boats, as Pastor Becky shared with us last week. He has called them to a life as fishers of people. And Jesus' work has begun in earnest. We read in Matthew, right before our gospel text for today, that Jesus was going throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease, every sickness, every affliction. Demoniacs, epileptics, paralytics were all cured. And we hear that great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. And now, Jesus is on the mountain with the disciples gathered around his feet and the crowd that had followed Jesus gathered around them. What must that have been like? In his book, Discipleship, Dietrich Bonhoeffer sets the scene for us, and and Bonhoeffer writes this. Jesus on the mountain, the crowd, the disciples. The crowd sees. There is Jesus with his disciples who have joined him. The disciples, not so long before, they themselves were fully part of the crowd. They were just like all the others. Then Jesus' call came. So they left everything behind and followed him. Since then, they have belonged to Jesus completely. Now they go with him, live with him, follow him wherever he leads them. Something has happened to them which has not happened to the others. And this is an extremely unsettling and offensive fact, which is visibly evident to the crowd. The disciples see... This is the people from whom they have come, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It is the chosen community of God. It is the people as church. When the disciples were called by Jesus from out of the people, they did the most obvious and natural thing the lost sheep of the house of Israel could do. They followed the voice of the good shepherd because they knew his voice. They belong to this people, indeed, especially because of the path on which they were led. They will live among this people. They will go into it and preach Jesus' call and the splendor of discipleship. But how will it all end? Now, we know this reading from Matthew as the Beatitudes, the beginning of what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. Following our text for today, and for the next couple weeks, actually, we'll be reading it in our gospel texts. It's like we'll be with the disciples and the crowd for a few more weekends of worship. And in that time, we will hear more about what it means to be a follower of Jesus, a disciple, and also what it means to be one who is sent out into the world. But my friends, today, today we listen and we learn about our setting. We listen and learn where and to whom the disciples, including you and me, are sent. Today we learn what is the kingdom of heaven and who is in the kingdom of heaven. What is the domain of God? It is as if we are sitting at Jesus' feet and looking out into the crowds that have followed Jesus to this spot. And there it is. And there they are. Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The poor, so beaten down, left behind, who struggle to survive, crushed to the point where everything they are, the very substance 
of their existence is as fleeting as a passing breath. Jesus says, these are the blessed of God. These are the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. A friend of mine who's also a colleague likes to say that there's something that all people, regardless of ethnicity, religion, social status, there's something that all human beings share. And that's the fact that we are all mortal and that we will all die. And we all mourn and grieve and hurt over the loss of those we love. But the kingdom of heaven, what Jesus brings is comfort. Comfort knowing that death is not the last word, that death has lost its sting, that Jesus is about life, life now and life forever. Jesus goes on, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Dietrich Bonhoeffer writes about this, and he says, the earth belongs to these who are without rights and power. Those who now possess the earth with violence and injustice will lose it. And those who renounce it here, who were meek unto the cross, will rule over the new earth. God does not abandon the earth. God created it. God sent God's Son to earth. God built a community on earth. Thus the beginning is already made in this world's time. A sign is given. Already the powerless are given a piece of the earth. They have the church, their community, their property, their brothers and sisters in the midst of per persecution, even unto the cross. In the rest of the Beatitudes, we hear more about what this kingdom of heaven is like. Righteousness, meaning being right in the presence of God. Mercy, peace, comfort. This is what Jesus tells us is the kingdom of heaven. These are the people who are blessed. But if the disciples, those gathered on the mountain, and those of us gathered here today, either in this spot or online, if we are to live in this kingdom of heaven brought about by Jesus, it's not going to be easy. And Jesus says this, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And Bonhoeffer again has some teaching for us, and he says, The disciples will be Jesus' messengers. They will find listeners and believers here and there. Nevertheless, there will be enmity between the disciples and the people until the end. Everyone's rage at God and God's word will fall on the disciples and they will be rejected with him. The cross comes into view. Christ, the disciples, and the people. One can already see the whole history of suffering of Jesus and his community. It sure seems to me, my friends, that we're in a time of suffering, that the community of God and Jesus Christ is suffering and hurting. We are so aware of so much violence and hurt and pain in this world, war, famine, hunger, homelessness. And most recently, the horrible images of the killing of Tyree Nichols a young man in Memphis, Tennessee. Bishop Eden, who is our presiding bishop, issued a statement on, on this killing 
that quoted from our church's social statements. The ELCA has a number of social statements, and this statement is from uh, 2013, and it's called The Church and Criminal Justice, Hearing the Cries. And Bishop Eaton quoted this line, Christians, in their longing for Christ, find themselves deeply immersed in the sufferings of the world. Christians are not aloof spectators watching the world's troubles. Faith leads us into solidarity with the suffering. Faith leads us into solidarity with the suffering. My friends, we're not just on that mountain sitting at Jesus' feet and looking out into the crowds. We are called to be joining those crowds. We are called to be living in the midst of suffering and those who suffer. And we can do this, my friends, knowing that that is the kingdom of heaven and that is what it means to be a follower of Jesus to, is to live in that kingdom. But how do we do that? What hope do we have? And I hear, I think, I think that Paul has a good word for us, and this is from our first reading today. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we, we proclaim Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. And God's weakness is is stronger than human strength. We are called to live in God's weakness, my friends. We are called to live in God's wisdom. And we are called, as the prophet Micah says, to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God.